you some, uh, let me give you some kind of good things happening. Just in brief, uh, I worked on a show a long time ago called Sightings. Anybody remember that one? The pilot episode for Sightings. We did the Area 51 piece. Uh, I was one of the original creator producers on a program called Strange Universe, which ran for two and a half years. It's usually when UFOs show up, not exactly good news a lot of times, because when UFOs show up, usually some bad things kind of start to happen. Kind of when God talks to somebody, usually someone dies. You ever notice that? Here's what's been interesting that's been going on. Since 1990, when I was a producer and co-director on a UFO series called UFO Contactees, and we traveled around the world and we gathered about 600 hours of information, uh, interviews with scientists, abductees, researchers. Somebody had a dog barked at a UFO. We went out and talked to them. We went to Italy, we went to Spain, we went to Germany, we went to Switzerland, went to Canada, did all these interesting things. And then people say, well, how can you tell the difference between a good abduction and a bad abduction? I said, well, if you're on the ship and you're face up on the table, usually kind of a good abduction. If you're face down, usually not so good. But that might be different for people in San Francisco. So anyway, um, in Hermosa Beach, which is a sleepy little seaside community that specializes in volleyball and alcoholism, um, people come to Hermosa Beach when they run out of t-shirts and weed, basically. So uh, uh, that's what Hermosa Beach is kind of like. But I pull into my house, and there's about 50 people out in front of my house, all pointing at the sky. This is Halloween, October 31st of last year. And we sit in front of my house for the better part of an hour and watch three craft, I'm not kidding, about 150 feet above our heads, moving back and forth over the houses, that look like Christmas wreaths, if you will. They're rings that actually have bulbs in a circle with red lights at the cardinal points. And when the ships actually move, the red lights actually light up in the direction that the, uh, that the objects are going. And they're moving in and out of the clouds at that point. We're sitting there and a couple of girls walk by on their way to the local pubs. And they say, oh, we saw that two weeks ago out in front of the pier. Well, then we get on and they say, well, go check out the videos because they've been flying over Southern California in a wave for about the last six months. So we go on and we find out that they flew over Hermosa Beach on April 19th of last year and then August 22nd and then October 31st. But at the same time, they were also seen in Silmar, Tustin, Orange County, over Disneyland, all kinds of areas in Southern Cal. It is interesting that when the ships began to appear, directly after that were those big fires in Silmar. Anybody remember the Silmar fires? They kind of were stupid because if you're in the rest of the country, they burned down these massive mobile home parks. Doesn't make any sense. Which part of home and mobile didn't people understand? Don't you just tow your house away when something's on fire? That made no sense to me at all. But the Silmar quakes then, I'm sorry, the Silmar fires then led to a whole series, and this affects everybody in Southern California, there has now been a massive amount of, of earthquake activity, a swarm of several hundred quakes out by the Salton Sea. And at the same time the UFO activity has been going on, I think it's interesting because either they are precursors to this activity or they are drawn to the electromagnetic energies of the Earth and the planet itself. Now California is a very interesting place for UFO activity. Why? Because here in California, the reason you're called the Golden State here is because you live on a quartz matrix or structure. And this quartz matrix, because quartz retains heat, energy, and information, it means that the very nature of California is psychoreactive because of the quartz, the humming quartz that you all live on, along with the gold that's an electrical, a fantastic electrical capacitor at the same time. Now the fascinating thing about San Francisco is, is that San Francisco is a Gemini city. And it's interesting that the astrological sign Gemini is the twins, or the two boys, or Mercury, who is in fact the hermaphrodite. But what Gemini has evolved into, how many Geminis, any Geminis? How many Scorpios? Uh, okay, there's a sex nation class uh, going on in for your uh, circus, for your controversial. The, uh, the thing, yeah, right, yeah. Hey, nice stereotype, Sean. Uh, the, uh, so here's what's cool about Geminis. What's happened with all you Geminis? What am I Geminis again? Geminis? Here's what's happened with all you Geminis. The twins, or the parallel aspects of Gemini, which means Gemini is a little, they're a little gossipy. They're very chatty. They're very, uh, they're, they're very, shall we say, uh, left brain, so to speak. And it's popular information. It's pop music, pop culture, popular news, very rapidly transmitted information. But what's happened with Gemini is, is that now, and this is the, basis of the effect of what's happening in San Francisco is the essence of Gemini, I love San Francisco, don't you? 
It's like the circus came to town and just stayed. You know, you notice that? It's kind of like the Grateful Dead just never left. Kind of, you okay, sir? You all right? You comfortable? Yeah, okay, there you go. So, uh, it's, like, it's like doing dinner theater. Can I have a drink, please? Can I have some uh, lobster over here? So the, uh, so the fascinating thing about Gemini is that what you are doing is the depth of your information has gone from pop culture to now the Stargate, where information is being channeled to you directly from the center of the galaxy to allow that information to go out to the rest of the world. The essence of the throat chakra, if you will, the communication vortex, has now moved from the stone Gemini up to Moldavite, which is actually an asteroid that struck near Moldavia 144,000 years or so ago, which is why it's called Moldavite. So the essence of information that you are transmitting here in San Francisco is going through a fundamental change. The UFO phenomenon is so phenomenal because, number one, there is a military aspect of this, where we have governments around the world that are actively studying anti-gravity and anti-matter and all of these things that we, that, that we view as part of the UFO world, if you will. At the same time, there seems to be a massive amount of sightings, but now it's very difficult for us. I mean, 50, 60 years ago, it was easy. Now it becomes much more difficult to find out which ones are them and which ones are ours. So, Aldous Huxley had an interesting quote. And Huxley said, we have found a footprint upon the face of the unknown and discovered to our dismay that it is in fact ours. And that's what we're dealing with in the UFO community. And that's why people like myself and the esteemed gentleman on this panel are investigating a lot of things. And we don't know, we don't know where the reality of the military aspect ends and where the UFO aspect begins. What I do know is that they seem to show up at great stress points in human history. They seem to show up before fires, before earthquakes, before great natural disasters. And what they seem to be doing is processing the energy of what's going on with each and every single one of us. The sun has not had a sunspot or a coronal mass ignition or uh, emission for approximately the last 450 days or so. The sun has been completely quiescent. In the last three weeks or so, the sun has started going crazy. And we've now had sunspots, solar flares. Anybody notice a shift of energy in the last three to four weeks or so? Oh, yeah. Anybody getting a little more irritable and having problems with animals and whatever else and all kinds of crazy things happening? I've noticed everything's beginning to amp up and step up. We've now entered what scientists fear most, which is something called cycle 24. And if you actually look at the Mayan calendar and understand the geometry, and the time coding of the Great Pyramid of Giza. The Great Pyramid in an area in the, in the base chamber, which is called the pit or the well of souls, has a huge trough that's called the uh, River of Fire that takes place between the years 2012 and 2014. At the same time, the people in the intelligence community that I'm talking to are saying, look, the economies of the world are about ready to be reshaped and remade. They're basically gonna demo and plow under the economies of Europe and the United States to replace it with this brand new kind of national socialist system, if you will. I mean, let me see, uh, when was the last time in history that money was out of control and we were in a depression and a very charismatic leader that really knew how to give a great speech took over a country and began to nationalize everything? Anybody remember what country that was? Uh, I don't know if you can remember. It's kind of interesting. I'm not sure you know this, but you just did that, sir. If you want to take a look at photographs of the 1932 Olympics and when they were actually held in Los Angeles, did you know that when you saluted the flag, you actually said, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to this, that the actual Nazi salute was what we used here in the United States before the Germans took it? So it's interesting that we're in that same 1930s pattern, once again, politically and economically. The fascinating thing about UFOs, once again, as I wrap this up, is that they're us. Maybe they're us in the future, maybe they're our parents, maybe they're our grandparents, but what they don't want you to know is that we are an amazing star-spanning species, that we came from a number of other planets and galaxies, maybe even universes and places from all across this great big giant galaxy or universe or cosmos, and that we are a star-spanning species with a great and amazing heritage and a fantastic and stupendous future. They don't want you to know that. They don't want you to know that the reason UFOs are returning is because there are parents and grandparents and everybody's trying to get a good spot at the graduation. I'm Sean Morton. Thanks a lot for listening.